and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick, with the City of Hampton's Communications and Marketing Department. And today we're going to talk about a program that would allow you not just to learn more about the fire department, to actually experience some of the things. My guest is Joe Brown from Fire. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Ms. Robin. Now, I'm allowed to say that we call you Smiling Joe Brown. You may. You may. You are so um, easy to get along with and talk to. I think this will be fun. Well, thank you. So tell me about the Citizens Fire Academy. The Citizens Fire Academy was created in, I believe, our first iteration was 2012. And we have up to 20 or 25 students that experience the fire department. Um, now, who, who wants to do this? Like, I'm thinking this is like, you know, baseball camp for grown-ups. It's one of those things that every kid, certainly every boy, but an awful lot of girls now, too, think about firefighting as being an exciting, wonderful, and, and way to contribute. And then a lot of people grow out of it. But does that, you know, stay in your mind? Do you still think, wow, I want to see what those firefighters do. I want that taste of it. I think you would be surprised. We've had 16-year-olds. We've had 20-year-olds. We've had married couples. And we've had married couples in their 80s participate with the Citizens Fire Academy. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. So yep. what do they get to do? Um, normally, it's an eight-week program. Okay. And we meet for two hours on Thursdays. And this 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 Citizens Fire Academy will meet on Thursdays. All right. Um, it, it varies by academy as to what day it meets. Um, they get fire extinguisher training. They see our fire boat uh, and the different uh, technical features of the boat. Um, they experience what it's like to hold a fire hose oh, wow. um, under pressure. Um, we teach them about auto extrication and uh, all the, the specialty teams that we have with the Division of Fire and Rescue. So some of it really is things they can use, use in their own lives, like fire extinguishers or safety around the house or if they're in a car accident kinds of things. And some of it is really looking up close at what you all as professionals do. Absolutely, that's exactly what it is. It allows them to see where their tax dollars go. It allows them to see the uh, technical features um, that we have or the abilities and capabilities that we have that they really don't get a chance to see every day behind the scenes. Do so. they get to like put on gear or get on a fire truck or anything? Both, uh, actually. They get to see the gear, they get to experience it, um, and then they also get to ride on several of our fire trucks, actually. Uh, we have been fortunate in that we have a fire chief who says, as long as you don't hurt my citizens, you can do just about anything you want with them. And I said, okay, not a problem. So we have actually given them the opportunity to ride in the bucket of our tower truck. Oh, as no well. way! Yeah. I want to do it! Well, you're more than welcome <laughs> anytime. Oh, that's so cool. Yep. So what do people say after this experience? You know, what do they learn or feel or <clears throat> what's kind of the high point for folks? It varies by the individual. Mm -hmm. It really does. Uh, the takeaways uh, vary. Uh, some people did not realize that the house, the typical home from the 40s, did not produce toxic smoke or smoke at the levels that we're seeing it now, and they didn't see the burn rates inside the homes. Uh, but we show them the difference between a 1940s home and a, a current home where the toxic smoke is. Uh, There's is, so many is, more plastics. There, there are many plastics. Oh, that makes me feel mm -hmm. good about having my 1940s home. <laughs> well, it's not the home, it's also the, the carpets and, and uh. you know, just the shortcuts that we've taken. Um, as technology has improved, uh, has become a lot more dangerous for us and for citizens. Wow, so, yeah. wow. Do you get do the thing where they have the smoke in the trailer and they crawl along? No, That's we don't. That's hard for some yeah, of your It would be, seniors. for some of the citizens, it would be a little difficult, um, but we do everything to their level. That's so. really neat. And yeah. I assume some of them can do a little more maybe than others. It just depends on your class. Yes, yes. Do, do some of your younger folks use this as a, as a way to find out more about, like maybe it still might be their potential career. They're not reliving their 10-year-old dream, but they're still testing out to see. Um, we have a very active volunteer pro firefighter program in the city. Um, and I think we get some of the 16-year-olds who are somewhat interested in it and would like to learn a bit more about it. So they go through this with a parent or a guardian. Um, and it gives them a small taste of what, what lies ahead in firefighter school. That's a great idea. Yep. And then um, 
do some of these people become volunteers at, at some point, or you just really haven't been doing it long enough necessarily to see? We've completed four Citizens Fire Academies. Our fifth one starts on March 20th. Okay. And so I haven't seen any of the younger folks in our volunteer system as of yet. But it, it'll probably happen. Yeah, I bet it will too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they have to settle down into a job or figure out what they're doing or, or make that decision about um, the future. So what is the minimum age? You mentioned 16. 16 is the minimum age, and if you're 16 and you attend, you must have a parent or guardian in the class with you at all times. That makes sense. But anybody over 18, and we've had them into their 80s, uh, attend as couples. So I think, you know, you and I were talking beforehand. Mm -hmm. This is one of those um, Hampton and you, yes. or Hampton 101 kind of mm -hmm. programs, and it, it folds into what the city's trying to do in terms of giving people education that they can use in their lives, but also education about city services and specialized training and, and all of the things out there that we do. Um, do you find that some of these people in your class have taken either the Police Academy or the Hampton 101 or one of those other courses? I would say the majority of the students have taken some semblance of the courses. I've had, a, uh, I've had past students tell me they've been in Hampton 101. Um, the police, Citizens Police Academy, as well as Diversity College. Um, so it was a, it was a stepping stone uh, for some that I'm assuming have gone on into different colleges within the city. What a great thing the city has done as far as citizen engagement. So It's citizen engagement it. and it's also lifelong learning. And I, yep. I remember from the community plan that mm -hmm. wrapping educational opportunities together, not necessarily for credit educational opportunities, right. but, but ways to keep learning and growing. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Well, Joe, tell us just a little bit about you since you're here, what you do with the fire department. You've been there for okay. a few years. I have. I started off as a volunteer when I moved back to Hampton in 1993, um, and I did 11 years with the Hampton Volunteer Fire Company. Um, became a career firefighter in October of 2004, and was a medic firefighter and became a paramedic and was promoted in 2012. So you've gone through that regular traditional fire kind of volunteer part yes. and then in Hampton so many of our people are cross certified for both EMT and fire. Yes, um, it's a, the minimum requirement for uh, our firefighters is EMT basic and there is a contractual requirement that they become advanced life support uh, technicians at one rate or another. Most of us choose to go uh, to the paramedic level, which is the higher level, because it offers us the ability to help the citizens um, a little bit more. Well, there are so many things that you guys do when you mm -hmm. arrive on scene, and it, it makes sense to have you train to do whatever needs to be done and not just you fight the fire and somebody else come in and take care of the people afterwards. Absolutely. Absolutely it does. Okay. So fire boat, fire truck, holding a fire hose. I mean, this sounds like a lot of fun. We've taught some of our past classes uh, about our EMS training program, our emergency medical services. Um, one of our lieutenants, um, Lieutenant Stauffenberg, created or was able to get us accredited to teach our own advanced life support classes. So we bring the citizens in oh. and um, show them some of the mannequins that we use and, and they learn to start an IV and they, they learn to intubate a mannequin and, oh my and, gosh. and see the program uh, that he developed. That's really so, pretty cool, yeah, too. We're excited about it. Now, does this class fill up? I think people are going to be watching this show, and they need to write down a phone number and call and register, don't they? Well, they do, and you can register online at uh, www.hampton.gov forward slash fire, and in the left side is a link to the Citizens Fire Academy registration page. For those that don't have uh, computers at the house, you can also do it through 311. Um, that's easy. Which is very, very easy. So there's actually room in our March 20th class. Um, and I have a seat for you. So <laughs> I all wish you have I to could. do is, yeah, absolutely. That sounds like a lot of fun. Absolutely. Okay, well, thank you, Joe. It's good to have you here. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Welcome. And thank you for watching. I hope that you will all uh, call 311 and get registered for this class. It should be not just informative, but also a lot of fun. And the more people know, and the more people are able to help themselves and other people is a good thing for our city. Thank you.